Hey everybody, welcome back to the bookshop. If you're new here, my name is Shelly. Tonight we're going to put together this little notebook. It's a very easy project, um, great for beginners and experienced because they're really fun to make. Okay, so before we go into details about this, I want to do an announcement. I am going to have a giveaway. Um, I just reached 500 subscribers, so I'm going to give away this journal. It's a hardcover, ring-bound, wildflower-themed book. It has some real pressed flowers on the cover and some inside and a lot of other goodies. It's pretty fat, <laughs> but I'll do a separate video with a flip through of this journal and I'll give all the details for the giveaway in that video. I just wanted to let you guys know, let people who watch this video know about it. Um, the other video, which will probably show up the day after this one, will say 500 subscriber giveaway in the title and flip through or something probably. Anyway, just look for the one with the giveaway in the title and um, you'll have to watch and comment so that I can use the YouTube comment picker to pick a winner. Okay, so watch for that. And this. These are usually referred to as um, like an easy no-sew tab binding. Some people call it a hinge binding, but there's no sewing. You use cloth most people use fabric. I have seen some people use washi tape. So, and that probably would work pretty good. I wouldn't use paper. I don't think it would hold up very long. I'm actually going to use lace tabs. So, for the one we're making tonight. But this is the prototype. I made this using Artie May's Vintage Days kit. The one I'm making tonight, it's no kit. It's just pretty papers that I chose. And, um, anyway, so real quick, it takes, it's got a front and back cover and six pages. One, two, three, four. This one also has a bag, which you put in after you make it. So you don't have to worry about that until the journal's already made. We got five, six. Back here, I put in a 25 sheet notepad. And the way I do it, at least the way I did this one, I'm not doing the new one this way, but this one I did with all on the left hand side was a writing page and on the right side was a pocket for tags and stuff so writing pocket i did that throughout the whole notebook so that you could put a lot of things in there you can do another notepad you can see how this is not st stretched at all and that has to do with how you do the tabs so you could easily do another 25 page notebook towards the front or something and have actually a lot of paper to write on. That's 50 pages if you count the front and back, plus all these and then all the tags that you put in it. And you can decorate it or not. The decorating, a lot of it comes from just covering the pages with your papers. But yeah, so eight pages total two for the cover and six pages that's what i did here you can do less and you can do more i just recommend you do an even number this one we're going to have the three tabs and so you want to have three tabs on the back also if you use an odd number you'll only have two tabs on the back and so they'll be like here and here and it'll be like wobbly so even number eight pages if you're going to do one this size and they don't have to be different colors i just did that to kind of so it's easier for you guys to see you know that you have a front cover back cover and six pages and then if you're going to make it like this you'll need 16 sheets of paper to be cut out so you can put one on the front and one on the back of each of these and they need to be a quarter inch smaller. So this is seven inches by three and a half inches. 
If you're going to do the papers, they should be six and three quarter inches by three and one quarter inches. A quarter inch shorter each direction, so you have an eighth inch border around the edge, which is the whole look. Yeah. The point of doing the paper, I guess. Um, now, there is an easier way. You can save yourself a lot of work. And I hadn't actually ever thought about it till the other day. You could use a digital and print on both sides or print on one side, whatever you want. But I did picture, I did images on one side and lines on the other side. And I did 14 sheets here. So <laughs> that's the back. Um, I probably will put this together eventually, but you know, priorities. I'm going to do this one tonight. And then, so that's easier. It's just, um, I didn't use a thick cardstock either. And I wish I had, I used a 67 pound, but if you used a nice heavy, what, 110 pound cardstock or something, it might be just almost as thick as this. So it's an option or, or a double-sided cardstock. If you have a nice Tim Holtz double-sided cardstock, shoot, I should try that. No. Or the last option, which these are, I've never made one like this, but you know, I've heard, I always hear about tag books. I'm not sure if this is how they put them together or not with this binding, but you could, this is be really cool looking. It's the same thing, six pages cover, and you just would put your tabs on starting below here, put your tab, tab, tab. So that's also an option is to cut them in the shape of a tag. And whether you glue on the paper or just print two-sided, that's you still have your choices of what you want to do. Okay, so um, I think I said that we were going to use lace for this. Before I show you how to do it, I want to make another announcement. Uh, this announcement is for people who watch the video for longer than five minutes. <laughs> um, this video is also a giveaway video. Um, I'm going to give away this journal here. This is a basically a tag decorating journal. It is filled with undecorated tags. They're printed with backgrounds and stuff because a lot of times that's the hardest part. Um, is doing the background and there's some stuff in here there's a couple journaling cards too but yeah these all have and it's all different kinds of backgrounds different sizes of tags in the this thing there's all kinds of little pieces of ephemera that you can use to decorate the tags and there's a couple like this that are good examples of layering that's Artie Mays does this and some of these pictures and these pieces of ephemera are probably in here. So, and there's little tags, there's little tickets. You can cut these apart and use them to help you decorate. But there's all kinds of little ephemera in here. Plus, there's going to be a bag of stuff that goes with this. See, it's just all kinds of tags. Anybody can make a, you know, start with a blank tag and you know, do some little coffee dyeing and stamping. That's easy. That's why I wanted to give you the ones that had the kind of pre-made background. See, I think these are cool. Music, there's several of those kind like that. So they're ready to decorate. And then there's going to be a kit that comes with it. Oh, and you get another one of those Tim Holtz slots back here. So you can um, use it in another journal or something. But you get this, and then you get this bag. And it has all kinds of stuff. This little bag has crocheted flowers, different colors. There's white, black, the little roses. There's some gemstones. There's buttons. There's bulb pins, so there's that. There's um, a couple different laces. There's that one. These little, 
there's another strip of that rose trim this trim and then a bunch of ephemera for decorating with i think there's a bunch of pictures in here there's a little bingo card so there's that stuff there's a bunch of um whale tail tabs in different colors some with text on them more ephemera here's a bunch of little mini tags um, if you watch Artie Mays, she'll make tags and then attach a little tag on top of it. And tabs. There's tickets, stamps, words, the um, oval number. Cut those out and put them on. There's some in white. There's some in black. Different sizes of pictures. Little glassing and bag. There's um, lace doily in here and trim got tickets and then down here is some sheet music some ledger paper some that's a pretty large size sheet of green masking paper dictionary paper so all of this is included and you just need to be a subscriber and you need to comment on this video here that you're watching right now <clears throat> probably be a lot less comments on this video so you have a lot better chance of winning but I am going to use the random comment picker YouTube's comment picker to pick the winner for this and the other one I'm going to do them both on St. Patrick's Day so it's just about two weeks from now. So if you're interested in winning this journal with all the tags and this bag of goodies, make sure you subscribe to the channel and comment on this video. I'd also love it if you gave it a thumbs up, but that's not a requirement. You just have to be a subscriber and you have to leave a comment. Okay, and the winner to be picked on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. Watch for that video. And then don't forget to get in touch. Okay, so we're going to do this. And I think I'm going to use Fabri-Tac. I was going to use Art Glitter Glue, but... I want to make sure they're going to stick. So you just stack up your pages. Make sure they're all going in the right direction. Make sure you have your back one and all your pages yeah, going the right direction. And the first thing you want to do is find the center. Since it's seven inches tall, I have three inches down here, three inches. This is the center, this one inch. And because my lace tabs are an inch, I know I'm just going to put, you know, almost half of it on there. My glue is very thick. But once we get it started, I won't stand it up. So we're going to need three. And you want to make sure the top and the bottom one will go about a half to maybe three quarters of an inch up and down from the top. But what you need in here, make sure you don't go too close. You have to have room between these two for another one. That's the main, most important thing, is to make sure your original three are far enough apart that you can fit two more in between there. Okay, so I'm going to take those out. Boy, this glue is thick. I haven't used it in a long time. I might have to just poke the nozzle. Of course, it shouldn't take that much glue for these. And then we'll just put that on. Oh. 
I will probably do a few pages and then I'll pause and I'll come back to do the last two. I just don't know if you guys want to sit here and watch me do this for all of these. I mean, it's not that many, but I would imagine after the second or third page, you would be like, yeah, okay, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's annoying that this glue is so thick okay I want to make sure they're you know fairly evenly spaced and that they look nice especially on this front cover Let's see if I can get this glue flow a little faster yeah maybe there okay so after we do the first page you turn it over and then we're gonna line these up so we know where those are and then put the glue right here in the middle. Of the top and the middle one. And just put that there. And then do another one here. And I'm putting on a little less than half an inch. I said my tabs are about an inch long. But you want to leave, just like any book when you do, how you leave that little space so the pages can bend. You want to have an eighth of an inch or so. So you don't want to pull, we're going to, Take these three that were first, and we're going to fold them over and glue them. But you don't want to pull this as tight as you can. You want to loosen it up and leave a little space. The more space you leave, the more you can put in between the two pages. You can pack it with, you know, 10 tags on this page and 10 tags on this page if you each page had a pocket. If you have a a lot of space left there. So first of all, let's put the glue right here. And I'm going to make sure I leave it loose. A bit loose. And we're going to do all three of these. Let's see, I got those almost too close. They're fine, but you have to be careful of that so they don't like bump into each other. You want them to be able to freely fold over. I'm leaving quite a bit of room but I like to pack my journals too <laughs> and this will be the front cover so there will probably be a pocket on the inside cover and also on the first page okay So we did three and two. So now this page needs three. And we're going to do them, you know, obviously. You can use these lace to see where the next ones go. 
you really want to pay attention more to the two than to the three. You want those two in between. And this last one. Okay. And then just like with the three, the first three, we'll flip this page over. And I want to make sure there's not a lot of glue, especially since I'm using lace and the glue can come through the holes. I don't want it to stick to the page. But now we flip this over. And let me just check that these are not stuck together. Nope, that's fine. Okay. So we flip this over, and now we're going to fold over the two tabs. That's kind of loose. Okay. And now the last page, we taped three tabs. You can tell how many you need to do by how many are laying here. There's three tabs laying here, so we want to put on two on this next page. And... We are, that's a nice long one. I'll save it for the end. This is the fourth page. So we're halfway through. And the last page, you don't actually glue any tabs to it. The back cover, you won't glue any tabs to that. You'll just fold over the three tabs that were glued to the page before. So I believe we might only have three more. Okay. And it starts to go a little faster, too. And actually, I might have to come back and just do a little glue on the any place I missed, which is not a big deal. So, yeah, we only have three more pages. So, you guys can fast forward through this. Let me see how much time. We're at 24 minutes. I'm going to pause for a minute. Okay, well, I meant to pause that, and I accidentally turned it off. But the good point is I learned something. You know, because I'm using this Fabri-Tac, and it stays kind of sticky. I've been worried about my pages sticking together where the glue comes through the lace. So I've been picking it up. And opening it, and I realized I had them, some of them, way too loose. You just want to have like an eighth of an inch in here. So I was able to, because the fabric tack was still soft, I could grab the lace and pull it over. Some of them I trimmed off a little bit. Um, but yeah, don't. Don't leave a bunch of extra lace here. I think I was doing uh, leaving a little bit too much lace 
on the side. You don't want to pull it tight, but you don't want to leave it loose either. You just need that little bit of room. Otherwise, it's going to be all wobbly. This is pretty good. This is like the other one. See, this is sturdy and it has that. You can see that gap. That's just about what you want. So check it in between. And we're on the last two pages. So this one, the second to the last page, this is the, the back cover. So this is basically the last page. And I'm putting three tabs on here. I have glue on here and it um, dried up. So now we'll do this again. Come on. Okay, so you're going to put three tabs on here, and then you won't put them on the cover. Okay, now it's going to... Hold on, sorry guys. It's been sitting, so it gets... Thickens up. Okay. Let's put one here, one here, and then the last one. I think I said you need 18 of these if you're going to do the eight pages. Up here at the top. And I like this lace. I think it's turning out to be really pretty, but that heavy duty fabric, this like canvas that I used here and I used bigger pieces. I, I guess I wasn't quite so worried about looks as I was on this one. Um, I think it's more important for it to be sturdy. This one is really nice and sturdy. Okay, so we put our last three tabs on. We're going to turn this over. We'll glue these two from the page before. Fold that over. And this one. Fold it over. And then you take your back cover and you lay it on here. And you attach these three tabs to it. That's why you don't need to put any tabs on the back. The tabs that you put on are always for the next page. And since there is no next page, you don't need tabs on here. We'll just line it up real good. Put some glue. On there. I can see the glue string. There we go, and here. There we go. And that is your tab binding with no sewing. Make sure this is not sticking to the page before. So you might check my, yeah. So you can see that's a good size gap, not too small, but that's actually good because I'm gonna have the tablet back here. So you need the little thickness for that paper. So I think that's perfect. And it seems nice and sturdy. It's not wiggly. Doesn't If it's wiggly, it kind of goes sideways. That's my hands moving. This is not moving. It's good. Front side. And that's what it looks from the side. See, I think that looks cool with the lace. And they're pretty well lined up. 
pretty even. They get off a little bit, but that is nothing. I don't care about that. When it's filled up, you can see this one. I think it looks cool. Um, I think uh, doing that one with the 14 pages is going to be a challenge to make sure they all stay straight and even so that it's not too far off. But there we go. Easy tab binding or hinge binding journal. Okay, I was going to show you about the bag. I put the bag in on this one after the journal was made. Let's see if I can remember how to do it. I wasn't even thinking about it. Yeah, I think I just folded it. And also, maybe, um, well, since the video went off before, um, I guess I'll learn how to edit because I'll have to attach these two videos together. Um, I didn't really plan on decorating. I do have a bag and I have my box of scraps. The only thing I really made was this because I had a piece left over from this page. Now, I don't know if I told you on the other one, you know, I do left side for writing, right side for pocket, left for writing, right for pocket. On this one, when I got to the center, I had this kind of cool paper that I wanted to have these designs in the corner. So I made these two pages for writing instead of one for a pocket. And since this was for writing, I knew this one had to be decorative. So the second half of the book has the writing on the right hand side, which I kind of like that. Decorative changes sides and the writing ends up on that side. So, um, I need to, well, we'll do the bag first, maybe. I, I need, I want to do, I want to do a tuck spot here, and I'm just going to do a simple one like this, but I haven't picked out a piece of paper or anything yet. I made this, but I don't think, it, it fits well enough, but I don't think it looks that good there, so I might have to find something else. Oh, too bad that's not taller. That's not a scrap from here, but you know, I don't really know if I want to use the pink. I could, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Let's not make it too difficult. Okay, this. Let's see. Where do we want to put the bag? Maybe I'll put it right here. Um, I also want to do, um, well, I'll probably do a Tim Holtz slots right on the bag like I did with the other one. Um, so I just have to lay it here to make sure it doesn't stick out beyond this page. We're going to glue it to this page. So I'm basically just going to fold this over and make it into a hinge. Nothing fancy, I'm not gonna add a hinge. Let's see if that's good before I reinforce the, I think that's good. This, how did I do the other one? Oh yeah, okay. When it's open, it's this size. I folded it on the wrong side. I wasn't thinking about decorating. Sorry, guys. I hadn't had it in my mind. I was worried about putting the book together. Okay, so that's glued. That's a good size for the page. So if I folded it a little crooked. Okay, get out of the way. See if we can fold this straight. that fit that fits very well that's good okay and I think because we have the fabric tack out and the bags a little glossy we'll use that I want to decorate the bag this pinks a little bit too pink 
but I thought maybe we could do it on the, I'll probably just do um, like some decoupage. I do have a flower fussy cut out, but it, this bag needs some bigger. This glue is not coming out again. I'm gonna, I need to put the cap on is what I need to do. There we go. Yeah, these bags are a pretty good fit. So there's your bag. That's all you got to do to have a bag. Just put that in, fold the little seam. So that it fits the page. Perfect. Okay, a little tuck spot here. Oh, here's my notebook paper. I get um in this one I had lined paper and I would have preferred that, but from printing shipping labels, every time I print a shipping label, half of the page is blank. And I can't print on it. So I just figured I'd cut those all off. Oh, here's a... That's the Tim Holtz. Um, I need something to put on this tablet. Well, maybe I shouldn't decorate. I'm not really prepared. I did dye some lace, too. I was thinking of blackberry dyed lace. I make this stuff is um, gathered, though. I don't really like that. Um, I have blackberry dyed lace in my shop. Oh, here. What about this? Let's put that on. I think I'll see if I can, if this doesn't stick, this art glitter glue, I can always go back with the um, Fabri-Tac. So remember guys, this is a giveaway video. So make sure you leave a comment. Make sure you're subscribed, and on March 17th, I will draw a name using YouTube's comment picker to win this journal, along with a bag of goodies for decorating all the tags that are in the journal. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going to put that on the bag, and I think I want to do something to the bag first. Oh, wait, if I put that flower on the bag, then I won't want to put this on the bag. Maybe that'll be good enough. I have that... Uh, Patty Pockets stain. I could use that to tone down the pink. Let's put a little bit of that on here. This stuff is a glue and a stain. Mm. 
all in one. And it gives your, it's almost like coffee dyeing, but a little bit, it's more like stain or Mod Podge, like a, a Mod Podge that someone poured coffee in. I did that once. Yeah, I like that color. I'll put some on the back, too, after this dries. I actually have a fussy cut flower in here somewhere. Maybe I'll put that on. If I can find it. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to have to let this dry. So I will combine this with the other video, and it'll probably be, what, 45, 50 minutes at least. So that's going to be long enough. And I'll... I'll show you guys what I do, and maybe if I get the other ones done, we can see that too during the drawing. Yeah, that looks fine. I'm going to let that dry though, and then I will probably add this on right here. I want to do it now because I got to be able to put stuff in the pockets. But yeah, that'll cover a good amount of the bag. So I'll add that there. Okay, so thanks, guys. I hope you liked it. Um, we'll see what's up next. Okay, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.